are we declining as Americans in our society? The current standing president that we got in there right now, like his disapproval rating is still the roof. People don't agree with him. Mm -hmm. Then the other candidate, he a criminal allegedly. We are in need of a major culture shift, major, because we're just unhealthy all the way around. We're less interactive with each other. Um, we lose that connection and that intimacy with one another and the depression rates are going high. Did y'all know that this is the first time since the 1980s that the U.S. Surgeon General has came out and declared, I believe, what he called a state of emergency in regards to social media. We are actually at civil war level heights of polarization between Democrats and Republicans. Where do we go from here as Americans to try to get back on one accord? Hey, look, right. this is your All boy right. King right. Sage, Let's go. a All third right. of the Peace of Mind podcast to my right. Let's go, this is King Coop in the building. What's up, what's up? What's up, what's up? It's King Rell. What's going on, everybody? And we are peace of mind, y'all. We are peace of mind. Absolutely. This this week, we got a crazy topic to talk about. We got Cat Williams letting off so many uncomfortable troops. Mm. I mm. think that this year, that set the tone for this year. A whole lot of uncomfortable troops are going to be just thrown in front of our face this year. And this week, we want to talk about uncomfortable truth. Um, are we declining as Americans in our society? Yeah, and this is actually going to be part of a series that we're doing that we're talking about. Um, the whole series is going to be called Uncomfortable Truths. Yep. Um, so one of the things that we, like Sage is talking about, are we declining as Americans? Yeah, man. Because, I mean, you What's see a downward trend in just a whole bunch of things as far as education. You mm -hmm. got a downward trend in entertainment, a downward trend in our relationship with each other. And, um, I mean, with my tenure with the Ford Party, um, I learned that we are actually at civil war level heights of polarization between Democrats and Republicans. And we're just being played and toyed with by these people that are up top, up top here and manipulating political agendas. It's just no one. I'm surprised we haven't had more violent outbreaks by now. For real, for real. Mm. I mean, I think that there's a lot of you know, civil unrest. And this is the, this is the question that I pose. I civil said, unrest. is America going to shit? Are we declining as the world power known as the United States? And I think so, too, because, you know, and I'm going to get into this later on the show. Uh, but there's a lot of things that uh, have been reflected in previous world powers of, of the past that we're seeing right now um, in the United States. I say the uh, the most prevalent recent one would be, of course, January 6th attacks. You know, that's clearly civil unrest and if we look at what happened in the past uh, with the Boston Tea Party and stuff like that, that's how certain democracies and other governments were formed. So we really shouldn't be taking that light because that could lead to some whole other different shit. Damn. Yeah, bro. I want to add on to your point about, you know, is America going to shit? Of course it is. I mean, people's <laughs> hearts are going, are going cold every single day. Uh, we're literally like adults are just big ass kids. Like we're debating about, you know, who's the best political party. Like, oh, I'm right. You're wrong. Um, you're a coward for doing this way. So it's like, yes, like we are absolutely going to shit because, you know, we can't even sit down and have civil conversations with one another about how to get things done. Okay. So let me ask y'all a question then. Do you think that the American dream still exists in America? So like that's that's a question we talked about off camera and it's it's really tricky for me because where when were we great? When did that really exist? If it exists, it probably existed in the birthing of our nation. When people were coming over from fucking UK, Germany, um Ireland, uh, no, Africa is a different story unfortunately. Um but <laughs> Unfortunately, because so I was about to say African, I was like, well, you know, that's I mean, not, not that's not a dream. That's a yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, facts. That's facts. But um, I mean, when were we ever really great? Like, when did that really ever exist? When was there not a point where there was some type of civil unrest? It seems like it was always something going on that the United States constituents we're trying to uprise against. So I would challenge you, like, what do you mean the American dream? That's a good point. That's that gave me some great pushback on that. Um, I say like, you know, in a society, there's always going to be different casts and different branches and different levels. So the American dream is not going to exist for everybody, but we can't deny that people flock to this country 
for, you know, the, the dream of coming here and, you know, getting away from being a slave in that country or getting away mm -hmm. from, uh, mm -hmm. you know, war zones and getting away from, you know, just all the poverty and stuff in different countries. You, A lot of people came here, flocked to New York and, and made it, you know what I'm saying? But I say... To answer that question, I say that the American dream is still prevalent. It's just morphed over time. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that hope and faith are still alive in the world. Um, the only thing is that, you know, things have morphed. It's uh, morality and, you know, just unfaithfulness have been brought up in the world. Like today we see a lot of scammers. Um, we see a lot of things like, you know, there's a lot of people that are getting money in unconventional ways now. So instead of coming here and, you know, doing something that's honorable and valuable, people are coming and finding ways to snake each other. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Could you elaborate more on that? Like, what are they doing that's like uh, not conventional or that's kind of taboo? Like, what are they doing to get their money? Well, you know, one, I was talking about like the scammers. Um, I think that, um, you know, people are almost encouraging these types of behaviors in a way. You know, people are... You know, in 2020, it was the whole PPP loans thing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people got arrested for that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so people are going after ways to quickly grab cash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like mm -hmm. when I think of the American dream, I think of people that, you know, they, they set a goal and they, they come and they, they rearrange their lives to work towards that goal. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it could be, you know, I want to I wanna have a family of four. I want to have a family of five. I want to give me a house. I want to move to this area, you know what I'm saying? And I'm going I'm to work this meaningless job. I'm going to work my way up to do that. Eventually, you know, that's the conventional way. Or it could be, you know, I want to go and um, I want to go and be an actor. So I'm going to go work this job and work my way to being an actor, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that it's a way of working through the system to eventually get to where you want to be. And then, you know, that, that's when you reach your dream. Mm. I will second that because I was watching uh, the Human Malad podcast and... Um, he was having an interview with Dr. Lex Friedman and Mr. Lex Friedman was traveling over to Ukraine and interviewing everybody from the lowest of lows, from people that are greatly affected by the war. And he said that he would, he was proud to be an American because at least here, you don't have to worry about people. If you want to start a business, you can do that. And you, you don't have to worry about any type of corruption within that business. Um, you don't have to worry about, um, trying about the food supply being poisoned at least at least you at least we have a plethora of access to food you know what i'm saying and he was just talking about how easy we have things over here and that really it made me think we really do the same thing here though I was except, just about to say, absolutely except we just we're just a little smarter with it you know yeah. what i mean we poison the food supply is poison that's what i'm saying the american dream it seems like has only ever existed for white Americans. Because mm. uh, even in the 20s and I 50s, know. I mean, like back in those days and or the 90s, the golden age of hip hop, um, um, the roaring 20s, um, um, the 1950s, I mean, we still were, we still were being lynched. We still were fighting for equality. People still looked at us as rats, dogs. So, I mean, like, when when does this make America great again attitude come coming from? When where where is the foundation in which we stand on to say this is an American dream? I don't know about that, bro. Cause like, you know, I think that you you saying in terms of like the equality in America. I think equality in America is always going to white people, no doubt. But I I, I don't think that the dream only applies to white people because you got hundreds of thousands of immigrants that have moved here. And have created a better life for themselves. People have created mm -hmm. businesses for themselves, been able to to flourish here that they wouldn't have the opportunity to, to in their country. Now, when I think of the American dream, although it may be okay, so okay, what you said, the 1920s and the 1950s, right? The 1920s, you got the Roaring Twenties. Mm -hmm. The white people and stuff, they they were flourishing, but then you also got areas like Harlem, well, yeah, you the had Black Renaissance, the Harlem Renaissance, Renaissance that going on. So it's certain pockets, you know what I'm saying? Then you got like the 1950s. It's something about the 1950s, the music, the cars, the commercials, the, the Coke commercials and shit. Like when I think of America as being a great nation that people look up to, that's kind of the two eras that I picture. And I think that um, 
you know, obviously for white people, it's always been great, but also during them areas, black people were doing good too. Like, right. yeah, we still had to deal with civil unrest and stuff, but I feel like families were more united. You know, and I think that that's one of the things that we're getting away from today is the, the importance of family and stuff like that. The but dissemination of the family, you're right. Yeah, families were united. Uh, people were, a lot of people were creating businesses and stuff like that, and they it was just more hopeful, you know what I'm saying? It's definitely beautiful to see where we came from because, like, to quote Dr. King, you know, Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King Day was um, this past Monday. Um, we've came a long way, but we have a long way to go. Right. You know, so it, it is beautiful to see what we've done in what it seems like so little time. You know what I mean? Think about the the 1960s. Think about going to a protest in the 1960s. It's a bit more violent than it is these days. Very peaceful these days. Yeah. I'm going to add on to my point too, kind of the full circle about, you know, what you were saying, Ron, about the American dream. You know, I'm, I'm looking at it from this point of, you know, we're just in a constant rat race. So to give you guys like a backstory of like what the rat race is, is basically, you know, where you're an individual in society just constantly trying to build your way up, like trying to get out the mud any way you know how, just trying to survive. And then here, you know, obviously in America, you know, people have to work either two, three or four jobs just to make it out here since America is already a capitalistic um, country as it is. And, um, you know, what I've learned this is that there's no getting out of the rat race, but however, there's a, a few solutions that you can do. Um, obviously, you could find a great career, find something that you're really skilled at, something that you really enjoy. I know for you, Ron, barbering school, like you could use that to leverage yourself. And then you can also uh, use different stock investments to invest your money. Like you can use that to still build your way up. Like you're still in the game, but you can still use that money to get out the game and then to leverage yourself. And then another thing with the American dream is that everybody here is trying to, you know, chase the bag to be the six figure person. Like we always say like, oh, you know, I got to get to it this way. Like I got to make six figures at 27, 28, 29, not realizing that, you know, it's messing you up at the same time. Well, I feel like the American dream, just to go to your point, Coop, I feel like it's more about the mindset. I guess I guess we would just disagree on the wording because the crux of your point I agree with, but I just wouldn't call it the American dream. I would say that's a shift in mindset. Um, if anything, maybe I would say immigrants that come here and build a life for themselves, maybe that would be the, the best definition of the American dream. But And when it comes to making it out the mud and developing your own dream and pouring into your own dream, manifesting what your inner essence is screaming out for you to do. That's a that's a that's a spiritual shift. That's a that's a mental maneuver that you're doing. I just I guess we just disagree on the wording. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that um I think that ultimately the essence of the American dream is freedom. You know what I'm saying? Both in terms of um you know, physical freedom, whether you're being, um, you know, oppressed by somebody, but also economic freedom mm -hmm. when you're able to come and whether that's starting a business, whether that's even something like hitting the lottery, you know what I'm saying? Like having, bro, you talking about like a capitalistic society, having right. a bunch of money in this society grants you that freedom. Oh, yeah. I think that that's what a lot of people envision when they talk about the American dream. Of course, there's a lot of other things associated with it. You know what I'm saying? The white picket fence, the big house and all that stuff. But I think ultimately the American dream symbolizes freedom. Yeah. I mean, I just Googled it. And once again, I just disagree with that word. But I mean, technically, this definition says the ideal that the United States is a land of opportunity that allows the possibility of upward mobility, freedom and equality for people of all classes who work hard and have the will to succeed. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I feel that that is from Britannica.com, by the way. Yeah. And um, I got a quote in here from uh, Winston Churchill, who was the British prime minister. Um, in 1945, he said, America at this moment stands at the summit of the world. And, you know, ultimately, that's how other countries, you know, that, that's what I was kind of asking y'all. Do other countries still view us that way? But definitely in that time period, that's how other countries viewed us. You know, mm -hmm. they came here because it was the summit of the world. They came here because I can come here and do anything. You know, I, I achieve freedom here. But then mm -hmm. again... People around the world look at us like spoiled ass kids. And this is from this is from mm -hmm. people I talk to. We mm -hmm. have everything. We really have everything handed to us. We don't have to worry about war at our doorstep. We don't have to worry about my child dying of malaria or 
you can have something like diarrhea and you be worried about, oh, maybe I'm not going to make it tomorrow. You right. know what I mean? And I mean, in a certain lens, we're <coughs> trading direct pain from indirect pain, but we're very spoiled here. We're very spoiled. We're not, we have lost um, gratitude. We don't have an attitude of gratitude. I don't think we ever had an attitude of gratitude. Um, that's what, ultimately why I feel like this American dream has been declining. Um, public health wise, Vivek Murphy, um, I did a lot of research on him. He's a very interesting individual. He came about in the uh, Obama administration. And did y'all know that this is the first time since the 1980s that the U.S. Surgeon General has came out and declared, I believe, what he called a state of emergency in regards to social media. In mm -hmm. the 1980s, it was smoking. And we all today know how terrible, like if you smoke cigarettes, like you you looked at you looked a certain looked at a certain yeah. way. And it used to be it used to be like a cool thing to do. But now, I mean, what's the cool thing to do now? What is dominating most of our lives? This phone. The phones. That, man, the, phones. Hey, the phones. We in you the know phones. <laughs> But no, for real though, um, like it's become such a prevalent part of our own our lives, it's Taking away the innate social necessity we need to have satisfied within ourselves. We're trading in real relationships for virtual relationships. Hmm. Uh, let me add on, because I actually got my notes about you know the pros and the cons of social media. Like you said, uh, with social media, uh, we've come a long way. Like We can actually connect with people from Germany, to um to the Netherlands, to South Africa, yeah. to Brazil and whatnot. Yeah, that's the pro con. But the con part is is that the more we use social media, we're less interactive with each other. Um, we lose that connection and that intimacy with one another, and the depression rates are going high. And I actually have like um Bro, like a note right here is <laughs> is well we here, but according to the CDC. Uh, the suicide rate has gone up within teens uh, to 13.6 million, like a year. So that's very unfortunate that stuff like this is happening due to social media. But I think that if we want like a well-balanced society, uh, we have to learn how to monitor ourselves, monitor our children when it comes to dealing, dealing with them with the phones and then social media and whatnot. Well, I think that the social media aspect is definitely one of the reasons why uh, American, American, and really just the society, the world as a whole, is going down, because it's it's really just eliminating the the spirit that we have for one another as humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and um, we're disconnecting guess, from each other definitely. Yeah, and I guess you know one of the things that also embodied the American spirit, I guess, moving away from the American dream, the American spirit. You know, it seemed like back in the days, you know, our grandfather's generation and stuff like that, we had a lot more tenacity. We had a lot more honor. We had a lot more looking out for each other. And now it's like with social media, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to slide on these girls that that live, you know what I'm saying, 50 miles away from me that I can't even see. And I'm not even out here talking to not just girls, but homies and stuff like that, you know. Man, so Tinder has a $500 subscription. And people with niggas are paying that. Yeah, that's that's right. crazy. That's wild. That's wild. All so pussy. pussy. Yeah. God, that, my, go ahead, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, you, get, you getting raunchy with yeah, it. Yeah, raunchy. The social media aspect is crazy because it's just like, you know, something that was created to bring people together right. is splitting people apart. And it's 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 tragic because we're we're losing the spirit that, that really connects us. You know? I also want to add on too that correlates with social media is also AI, artificial intelligence. Like we're getting to the point now. Where it's like we can't even tell the difference between real and fake. Like obviously, people out yeah. here that are using artists like voices and other like songs that they create, which is like bullshit because it's like you're taking away somebody's intellectual property to use it for your own profit. You know that's that's not a good look and whatnot. And then also, um, I have read an article earlier from the World News Information on YouTube, and it stated that. A Tesla, one of the Tesla's uh, scientists, uh, he was injured bad from the Tesla robot because the robot had a malfunction in it, and then the scientist was backed up in backed up inside the corner, and the robot damn near like seriously injured the scientist. So, what, what kind of we talking about the the car or 
No, like this is like a Tesla like robot, like an actual like kind of human like robot. So oh, the so so the robot put no the robot walked the scientist into a corner and damn near like injured him so bad with its metal hands that that scientist had to go get surgery and whatnot. So this story translates to you know what I've seen twenty years ago with our with our robot with Will Smith, like movies like that mm. translated to like. Now in real life, it just makes you think about a lot of things to what this world is coming to. And then also um, in New York City, they already have the um, the robot cops where it's like they got the robot dogs and then the other robots, too, that's patrolling the streets in New York. And then they also have it in L.A., too. So the integration of technology is slowly unraveling society. Yes, sir. Yeah, because we're not ready for it. Because, I mean, we technology is accelerated in such a rapid pace to the point where we can't handle how far it's going. So pretty much we're moving. We're moving efficiently and things are, man, we're about to be colonizing Mars. They're talking about putting hotels in space, mm -hmm. but we're not we're not ready for that. And to me, like I said before, I think it needs to be a slowing down. Of it. We need to slow down and we need to. We need to stop all just discoveries right now and let uh, let us catch up a little bit because if social if social media is causing our kids to question themselves and question life at eight years old mm -hmm. at fourteen years old if the suicide rates are the way that they are now if all we're getting in terms of our evolution and our growth in technology is more unhappy people, depressed people, anxious people, more people with ADHD and ADD, more deaf than what, what do we have? Mm -hmm. we have? We have a whole bunch of shit that we have created. We have a whole bunch of nice gadgets and gadgets. We have a whole bunch of conveniences, but if mm -hmm. we can't enjoy these conveniences, then they're not convenient. Mm -hmm. That's funny because uh, Elon Musk, like his vision is already so ahead. Like he's at the point where he wants life on Mars. Like he wants us to be super technology advanced as human beings that we create life and bring our inventions, our uh, ideas on to Mars. And then at that point, it's like you have to like really question, like like you said, Jay, like we have to slow the fuck down. Like we are going way too fast with making brand new technology like every yeah. single day, which it's our own destruction. And then I said this in our last episode, in the anti nailist episode, nailist episode, where it's like, yo, like we are literally the creators of everything we do, like with these brands, with these phones, with, you know, Puma, Nike, uh, Tesla, um, you know, Ford, like all these great inventions. But at the same time, it's like we're not seeing the cause the cause and effect. The psychological yeah. Bingo. Of that. that is yeah. happening on us. Like again, like yes, yeah, like we do need these inventions. We do need them. But at the same time, it's like we gotta have that balance. And we a lot of these inventions we don't need. These things that we're doing are convention are conventional. These are conven these are conveniences. Um these it's all in the name of efficiency. It's all in to make things easier to um in the name of capitalism in order to make more money. And we are so absorbed by this capitalistic mindset that we look at everything as a as a dollar sign and we i don't i want to double back on what i said i don't think that we need to stop inventing and stop progressing forward but i do believe we need to just slow down because i mean if i'm elon musk like how are you going to tell me that to stop to stop doing things that could affect generations to come you can't if that's me man you can't come on now i'm doing something for the that can push us forward all the way down. You know what I mean? But I think it needs to be something separate that is integrated in the system, which we can touch on later, that will allow people to use natural remedies again, to um, use their own bodies to clean themselves, cleanse themselves, and just to become more at one and at home with themselves in the future. And honestly, not in the future, right now. Yeah, I think that, um you know, one of the things that I was saying earlier about the uh, dishonorableness and unfaithfulness being on the all-time high, I think that with all of these um, 
distractions that we got going on is leading to the increase of unfaithful people. Um, one of the things that made America so great, in my opinion, was, you know, we were all kind of united under God. Yeah, we're under, it's a nation where you can experience, um, you can serve anybody that you want to. But right now, it's just like, there's so many things that people don't even know who to turn to. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that spend a bunch of time on their phone. You know, that that becomes their God. There's people that, you know, I was doing some research on this. Um, according to PewResearch.org, the percentage of atheist people in the United States is up 6% from five years ago and 10% up from a decade ago. And 29% of the population are atheist or agnostic. And to be honest, bro, I think that that has something to do with it, too, because we had the interview with Lecrae. Right. And uh, one of the things that Lecrae said, you know, and uh, I think it was Church Close 4, he was saying that, like, people can pray <laughs> confused. Mm -hmm. So they pray to the universe. And then in the interview, he was saying, you know, without God, you're just a cosmic accident. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of yeah. people out here that are, you know, they're, they're being distracted by their phones and stuff. People aren't having a chance to raise their children. So. They don't, they don't care about life. They don't care about morals. And ultimately, if that keeps going on, that's going to lead to the downfall of our people. Well, right. I mean, I'm going to echo that. And I, once again, <clears throat> um, Vivek Murphy, Vic, uh, Victor Murphy, the U.S. Surgeon General, said that they did a study and they said that 29% of Americans um, out of this pool of folks are religious. Seven, the other 71% are spiritual, mm -hmm. right? They identify as spiritual. And he described that as, so you can clearly see that we have a religious hunger. Right. Like we have a spiritual hunger. We're, we're dying. We're, we're dying. We're pleading to be connected to that higher virtue, that higher nature right now. And that's yeah. something I think that we definitely are missing. But then again, I have to double back on my spiritual, spiritual family and say, really, what we want is religion. Because spirituality, from what I'm gathering at this point in my evolution is more so unorganized religion. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, honestly, it's more agnostic than anything. You don't right. subscribe to anything. But um, to quote 19 Keys, my belief system is my, is my uh, freedom. Just because I don't have to just do everything this belief system tells me, but it, it gives me room to explore other faiths and other ways of living, approaches to solving problems and just to live in this life. So if I'm a Muslim, it doesn't mean I can't dabble into Buddhism. Just because I'm Christian doesn't mean I shouldn't be well-versed in science right. or, or even have a social media account or whatever the case is. You know, it's all about um, remaining... I guess you could say agnostic within your spirit, but it's nothing wrong to adhering to a discipline. But the thing is, I feel as if with social media, we're able to just call people out so quickly. Mm -hmm. Whether you're an expert on the subject or not, you just call people out and say, and eh, actually it sounds like misogyny, misogynist, blase, blase, cancel, psh, psh. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, bro, <laughs> like everybody's a critic and everybody right. is a, a source of credibility, even when they're not credible. To add on to your point, um, like like Lecrae said, like when we was on the interview with him, he said, if you don't have a God, then you're just a cosmic accident. I have to agree with that because, again, I don't discredit people for being atheists, but it's just like if you don't have anything or if you don't have, like Ron says, like that faith and that hope, yep. then you're going to fucking die. I'm sorry. You know, and I, I, I hate to be God, that damn, language. Language. I hate, I hate yeah, to be a little I, raunchy over there, buddy. I mean, I have to be that <laughs> honest because it's, it's, it's just like, mind, what are you living for? You feel what I'm saying? Again, I, I don't subscribe to like religion, but I still do believe in the most high. I do believe that he gave me a certain level of wisdom, knowledge and understanding. But just to walk around life and say, oh, no, like there is no God. And everybody's like dumb. I said, nah, bro, like you, you, you can't do that. Like you got to have something to look forward to in order to make it out here. Because if not, you're just gonna go off the deep end. Like think of it this way. Think of the analogy like, you know, the ocean, right? So the ocean is very blue, it's very crystal clear, it's beautiful. But as you get deeper and deeper, you're gonna go inside the dark ocean. That's how this life is. Like if you dibble and dabble into certain information, like you're gonna lose your fucking mind. I agree. Yep. Right? So, you, so us as adults, we like to be grown so bad that we lost our sense of child, sense of innocence. So when you take that 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 vision away, that creativity away, real. like you're just like you're just a fucking rock. 
Like you might as well just be dead. And I don't want that for you guys, but it's, it's, it's just, you have to live for something. And even if people disagree with what you stand for, at least you're standing for something, bro. I think that, you know, we, we talking about faith right now, you know, and one of the things too is like, it goes it goes more than just in terms of religion, you know what I'm saying? Also one of the things that's declining us as an American society is our faith in politics. You know, this, what, past two presidential right. races have been like some of the most disputed and, you know what I'm saying, uh, divided races that we've seen in, you know, who knows how long. Mm -hmm. But like even the, 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 the current standing president that we got in there right now, like a lot of the people that voted for him, his disapproval role, disapproval rating is still the roof. People don't agree with him. Mm -hmm. Then the other candidate, he a criminal allegedly. So you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> how how can we have faith and as a people when our leaders are we don't even have faith in our leaders? Well, you know what I mean. I personally believe, and the Surgeon General agrees with me. I've been quoting you the whole episode. Shout out to you, King. Um, we are in need of a major culture shift, major, because we're just unhealthy all the way around. You're talking about politics, but we truthfully are at Civil War level heights of disapproval ratings. I think so too. Congress yeah. has a 91% reelection rating. Mm. This is per. What, is, what does that mean? Meaning, they Congress will, the congressman will be reelected 91% of the time. Right in the House of Representatives, they would be re reelected ninety one percent of the time, but they have a less than I don't know the actual number twenty percent disapproval rating. Well, no, it's 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 one of them numbers. Um, they have a high disapproval rating, and they also have a high um, reelection rating. Right, so there's something inherently wrong within the system that we're adhering to. And people the, feel like they can't do anything about it. They can't. We can't do anything about it because we don't trust into the system. So we're disconnected from the system. But the thing is, if we don't trust the system, it's because that's symptomatic of the system that we're adhering to. So there has to be some type of change. There has to be a change in this capitalistic mindset. We have to learn how to talk to one another again with an open mind and tolerate toleration. Um, we have to learn how to discuss differences in beliefs while also having a standard of what is not going to be allowed. You know what I mean? I think that's another thing with uh, <clears throat> us as people is like we try to look for a savior so bad. Like we are willing to like stand in lines to vote for the next president. It's like, no, like you as a grown ass man or a grown ass woman, like I've always said, I'm going to continue to say is like you have to save yourself. Nobody's coming to save you. Nobody is coming to save you. Last time, nobody's coming to save you. You have to save yourself because we get it. We know how the system is. It's fucked up. Granted, but it's like you have to put yourself in position to know how to win. Because if not, you're just gonna get eaten up by the wolves. Yeah, so, but you can't get you can't do that on your own, bro. Yeah, so I, 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 I hold on. I get it. You can't do it on your own, but at the same time, it's like you have to really find that light and i said this on the previous episodes like you have to like really say internally to yourself or to or whoever you believe in say look i'm down right now but i swear to god like i'm gonna win i'm not just gonna win on my own of course i'm, I'm gonna have the help of other people but at the end of the day it's like i'm gonna succeed like no one's gonna be that coach for you like you have to coach yourself and then incorporate other people to help you with your vision with like what you want to do. So in terms of society, how does that apply to Americans declining and not having faith in, like should Americans just not have faith in any type of leader at all and just be out here just governing themselves? Like how does that apply to Americans declining as a society? How do we fix that? I mean, you have to, you know, be a leader to yourself. Like I feel like you, you, you should not be codependent on somebody else to get you through. Like, granted, they might be there for you. Like, they might have these laws in place for you, but it's like you have to lead yourself. And I said this in the Natives episode is like, that's the problem with people, and especially here in America, is like we are too codependent 
on somebody else to get us through. Like you can't depend well, you on- know, You know what, Rel, I, I gotta give you pushback because on, on a certain lens, I agree. I think that, that your perspective is necessary for a solution for us all. But the flip side to that is we have to be codependent. We have to be independent and codependent. To be under one nation. Exactly. Know? And I mean, it's it's just like a family. You know what I mean? Like, Because at the end, they were all big, one big family. And this goes into the American dream mindset. So, I mean, yeah, like work, be a leader within yourself, right? Be a leader within yourself, but also fight for the brother that's next to you. We have to. We can't just say, we can't expect a solution just to come out and just be like, no, like y'all have to find it within yourself and get yourself out of the situation because we have to... The system is comprised of individuals, but once again, the individuals are symptomatic of the system that they adhere to. So we have to make systemic changes. We need people to go into the system, infiltrate it from within and make it better, create better laws, get better people in place. That's what it's really going to take. You're going to have to get the right people that are going to build bridges amongst other people, people that are willing to build bridges between Democrats and Republicans white folks and black folks and Hispanic folks. Um, I like hip hop music. I like country music. Um, the engineers need to be working with with politicians on storm prevention. We need all types of, we need bridges to be built and we need teams because if you wanna go far, you can go alone. But if you wanna go farther, mm -hmm. we need a team. Me on my own cannot be peace of mind. And I could do it on my own, but I can't. Coop could do it on, you could do it on your own, you could do it on your own, but we are stronger as a team. And if we disseminate, we're not going to be nowhere nearly as successful if we were just together. Imagine taking care of all of these expenses on our own, getting all these resources on our own, doing all of this on our own. It's all about moving as a unit. And given you can't unify with everybody, some people you got to keep at arm's length and some people you have to just appreciate and in a non-judgmental way from a from a certain uh, from a certain space but you know so you let me ask you yeah. both so let me let me let me reply back with this first though i think that um yeah in, in regards to solutions it got to be we got to find things that unite us we got to find things to have universal faith in you know cuz we talking about a loss of faith one of the things that made the i keep going back to that 1920s 1950 era because like people were so united and people had pride in being american like I, I know some people that still have pride in being Americans, but a lot of people don't don't really give a fuck. And a lot of people, like Jay was saying earlier, see how the other the rest of the world sees us and see how fucked up we are in certain situations. So it's like, in in terms of solutions to to build back those bridges to unify us, we got to find things that we can all have faith in together and work towards that. You know, I think that would be the solution. I did want to give you some pushback. I agree with your essential point, but um. Essentially, I do think we need to get back to that unifying point. But me being a devil's advocate, I think we move, look in the past too much. In the 90s, they said the same thing. I guarantee you they said the same thing as in the 50s. I use this example all the time. They always talk about how music is on a decline, right? So they once jazz came about, they said this is ungodly music. But it was so fun. It was going crazy on that when sex. Rock and, then we got the birth of rock and roll. We had the birth of the blues. Um, then we had the birth of R&B, soul. Um, more soulful. And then we had the birth of hip hop. Now, as far as entertainment these days, now that's a, and music and entertainment these days, that's another conversation. But it seems like everybody's always looking to the past and trying to get back to the way things used to be. So when even on an individual level, when someone says, man, I just need to get back to being like this. I'm like, bro, you don't need to get back to nothing. You need to move forward with who you are now. Cause that person that, that was, that you were is dead. And I would I would love your thoughts on the statement that as long as we're trying to chase what is already past us, we'll never get to where we need to go. I mean, I think that sometimes it's necessary to look back into our history to get answers for our future, though. That's valid. That's valid. But it seems as if we're so obsessed with the past that we don't understand where we are now. Learn from the past, of course. I mean, at any point in history, there was always some crazy shit going on. I think the path forward has to be rooted within the God that is the present moment, the equalizer of heaven that is right here. Where do we go from here as Americans to try to get back on one accord? To move forward into one accord. But how do we do that if everybody, well, as we know in our, well, in American culture, it's like we're more divided than ever. So how do we get back to the essence of coming together? How do we get back 
to that if the culture like right now is like, oh, I'm better than you. Oh, no, I'm going to go this way and that way. I mean, I think that it comes, it, it stems down from the leadership, bro. Like we got to have leadership that doesn't just care about one side of America. We have to have a leadership that represents all aspects, like the, the upper class, you know, the, the white people, the black people, the Hispanics, the, the Asians. You have to have a leader that embraces you know, positivity and progress in all of these communities so that every every member and every race of America can look to a, a one person and put their hopes in them and be happy to be part of being America. And I think that would boost morale and provide that sense of American pride that we are on a decline now. I love that, man. That was well said. I definitely think that that is a key part of the solution, getting the proper leaders into leadership. Um, I'm going to bring up my experience as well as just my connections with the Ford Party. So just if for, just so y'all know, the Ford Party is a new um, political organization um, that is founded upon the idea we're not left, we're not right, we're Ford. They're all about building bridges with Republicans, with Libertarians, with Democrats and with, you know, with the Green Party, with all types of people with all types of backgrounds and finding a way to incorporate all solutions, to bring all solutions to the table, um, incorporating things like ranked choice voting. So if I'm voting for president, rail or coop, it's not rail or coop, it's rail, coop, Kamel, profit, George, and you rank them you know, on a list from one to five, and then that's how you tally up the votes. But that's just a background knowledge. Um, forward party pretty much in essence is it's not an either or approach. It's this and this and this, and we can all decide collectively based on a ranked choice on how we do that. So I think politically, and for, as far as attacking the system, I think that'll be, I think that'll be key. So we would include your solution on having valuable leaders, but we also need to make sure that we are implementing programs in it and changing the systems that we have in place. So the symptoms of that system are not so traumatic, they're not so cancerous. So we're, I say, above all anything, to incorporate individual oriented programs within systems. So that would be one of my first- similar to what I was saying about the different, you know, different races and different groups. Absolutely. Into the di okay. Absolutely. What about you, where was the solution? I love working with people, but I just know that human beings Ultimately, they're going to do what's in the best interest for them. I'm going to just be blunt. I mean, that's, that, that's it, a fact. That's a fact. Right? That's not a fact. It's a fact. It's not. People are going to do what they do, right? So what you got to do is you got to take care of yourself. Take care of the ones around it's you. Not. Yes, it is a fact. <laughs> so take care of yourself. Have a great team. Fuck everybody else. And just make sure that you are taken care of and take care of the people that take care of you. Because again, no one's coming to save you, bro or sis. I'm sorry. Got to save yourself. Put faith in God. If you do believe in God, put faith in him and put the fucking work in. Like uh, like Gilly said, put the work in. I okay. promise you, if you put in the work, you will succeed. Trust me. So there is intelligence truths. in what you're saying. Uncomfortable truths. Yes. Yeah, uncomfortable truths. That's an uncomfortable truth. Um, A very powerful moment for me is when I woke up to an Andrew Huberman episode with David Goggins. David Goggins said I something. Goggins. I, man, I always thought he was extreme. But I never like listened to him. I always just saw him on Instagram reels. Bro, he said, people are inflating this idea of passion, motivation, mm -hmm. discipline. Mm -hmm. Where is the passion, discipline, and motivation when you're 300 pounds and you can't see your own dick? There ain't no passion. There ain't no motivation. There ain't no discipline. Mm. The <laughs> sorrow and disgust. See, <laughs> look, but that's some real shit, though. That's, that's, <laughs> see, look, that's some real shit. But hey, but check me out. He said, yo, the thing that all of us are looking for is what he's saying. Just do it. Just fucking do it. You know what you need to do. You're not doing it. He said, I'm not the guy that's going to come here and console you. What you're doing is you're keeping yourself in your dungeon and you have the key in your pocket, but you are refusing to unlock that door because it's hard as fuck to do and live the life that you want to live. And he says, like, see, the thing is, everybody wants a rosy path. Life, but this, he says, life, this life is hard. This life is hard. And if you really want the success that you're trying to get after, you got to be okay with the pain. Yeah. We were talking about this off camera. Um, like when God gives you a challenge or when you, when you start shifting your mindset and shifting your spirit, it's not going to be easier. It's going to be filled with more and more challenges. So, I mean, just to elaborate from, on his perspective. 
you know, as long as you live in, you're gonna go through some fucking pain, right? Damn right, you are. So when you go through the pain, at least find different coping me- coping mechanisms to get you through that pain. You know, some, and this is why we have what we have today. This is why we have entertainment. This is why we have different beliefs because those beliefs is what keep motherfuckers going. Because without that, oh yeah, people would drive like people would lose their mind without having some type of belief. That's why I said earlier, like if you don't have somewhat of a God or whoever it is in in your life, you're going to fucking die. Mm. Period. (laughs) (laughs) Nigga said, Mm. (laughs) so Brad, I do have some more solutions, by the way. You want to go ahead? Go ahead. Give your last solution, then we move on for that. Well, here, we'll just talk about it a little later. That's fine. Okay. So I was talking about earlier, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm big on history, like as I've been talking about. So the thing about it, like when we look at, okay, obviously, you know, America is a great nation. It's debatable if we're still the, the best in the world, but a lot of people look at us like that, right? At one point in time, Rome was, you know, the, the capital of the world. It was the place where everybody wanted to look up to and move to. But we all know that Rome fell and crumbled, right? So, you know, drawing from history, like I like to do, you know, I I did a little bit of research and um, according to history.com, some of the things that led to the fall of the Roman Empire were uh, economic troubles and over-reliance on slave labor, uh, the rise of the Eastern Empire, over-expansion and military over-expanding, government corruption and political instability, spread of Christianity and loss of traditional values, and outsourced military recruitment due to low voluntary numbers. Now, does that sound familiar to y'all? Yep, sounds just like us. It sounds just like us. <laughs> That's just scary. That's just scary, bro, because like when we look at when we look at over expansion and military spending, I know that this is a hot topic right now, the whole Israel Hamas thing. Like we we are a great military power. We can go and help people out, but like there's a lot of people who are split on on the side of whether we should be doing that and just the history of America, we've always been kind of the first ones to help out, mm-hmm. you know, some of these countries and stuff. And then also um, government corruption and political instability. We were just talking about that. January 6th in the capital attacks. Like we got the same stuff going on now that we had going on then. And then I was actually talking to, uh, you know, our mentor a couple weeks ago. He was talking about with this year being an election year, with all the civil unrest that we have, this would be the perfect opportunity for, you know, some of them, the mother terrorist groups to attack us. Because mm. we, we devise the ones ourselves right now. And that's another thing, too, with America is we just don't know how to get the fuck out of people's business. Like, we're always the first ones there at a certain period of time. Like, we are always, like, the first responders to any given situation. Like, you know, kind of going back to the government corruption and then kind of with the Hamas and the Israel war, you know, like, America in the U.K., just dropped a bomb like in Yemen on Yemen and some of their um some of the Yemen regime and with inside that some people got killed, right? That's the reality of the situation. So I feel like us in the United States is like we have to learn how to stay out of people's business. We have to. I think that, that shit is some of that shit gonna be karma, bro. Like we can't just keep like, although we want to help people out, like, we can't just keep going and butting ourselves in people's business like that. Especially, like, when we're, I don't know the numbers of the military and stuff, but I don't know a lot of people that want to be in the military now. So I don't, you know, I don't I don't think that we'd be recruiting and outsourcing people to join our military. Mm-hmm. But I think that those numbers will keep dwindling. Because oh, yeah. why would I want to risk my life to go across the across the world somewhere and do something that I don't, you know, agree with. Why fight for a system that doesn't care about you? Right. But I mean, some people got to do what they got to do. Um I mean, but see, that's the thing. That's that's really just us though. Like we're not well not us me and Coop. I, I don't have the numbers on it. But like um there's a lot of people that have American pride. I mean oh, yeah. I mean that's something we didn't talk about. A lot of folks have American pride. A lot of people are proud to be here and think that there's not really much wrong with this country. Um, a lot of people are willing to fight and die. A lot of people are also psychotic and want to join the militaries for Marines and Navy <laughs> SEAL training and things of that nature. But um, but as far as as far as wrapping everything up, guys, we touched on a lot of things: social media, um, entertainment. Um, we got, of course, Coop's history lessons. You know, a whole lot of things. <laughs> um, public and mental health declining. So we touched on a lot of solutions too, but. Talk to me, guys. What are some of y'all solutions as far as how we're going to be moving forward? You want to go first, bro? You want me to go? You go first. 
I think that um, you know, it's necessary to look at. It's gonna sound weird. <laughs> it's, go, it's necessary to look at what made America great, and I'm not talking about that Trump shit. I ain't talking about that Trump shit at all. <laughs> Trump support. But we man, gotta look nigga. at. Okay, so when I say great, I mean in terms of unity that we had, in terms of like the faith that we had, um, the the sense of community that we had, um, the sense of uh, faith that we had, in terms of. Uh, Going out and starting our own businesses, creating our own legacies and stuff like that. And uh, we have to find things that unite each and every one of us. And something got to be done about this, uh, our leadership system, bro. We need a whole, like, yep. we need a whole Different taking apart and putting back together. Because, like, we have to find a leaders that embrace every, you know, every aspect of America and somehow find a way to create solutions that involve everybody. Absolutely. Uh, I want to add on to that. <clears throat> Uh, is we need to learn how to communicate because obviously, you know, on both ends of the floor, no matter your party, it's like we instantly shit on each other for Facts. what we're doing wrong. And it's like, bro, like we're grown adults. Like why, like, why are we moving or acting like kids? Like we had to sit down at these type of tables, write down everything logically, and, and then point out of what we can do to make, you know, this country great. Because America is... A beautiful country. Yes, we are like number one as far as everything, but at the same time, it's like we have a lot of flaws and those flaws can be corrected if we as adults put away our 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 religious views, put all that shit away and just break everything down one by one. So that way we wouldn't be in the situation right now. And also Absolutely. I'm gonna say this too. We gotta find a way to increase morality, bro, and like get back to Get back to like standards, you know what I'm saying? Like we gotta find ways to because as long as we have a capitalistic society, it's kind of hard for that to exist. Mm -hmm. But it's existed in the past. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I say that because now I feel like people always find a ways to snake each other out of money. And you know, go ahead, bro. Uh you know what Nipsey said? Nipsey said this in his interview, and I posted it on my story. He said, um, you know, the problem is with that is that people, they like a code, right? So people do a lot of weirdo shit, a lot of, you know, shit that's going to get them to where they need to be. So kind of like opportunists. So it's like, they have a lot of knowledge. Yes, like they got a lot of knowledge, and a, a lot of hustle and ambition, but they lack the heart. And that's yeah. just what Nipsey was saying. It's like, yeah, like that you got to the top, but the way that you got there was you was a fraud. Like you had yeah. fucked people over to get to where you, you need to be Trail at. Trail of dead bodies in your way. Metaphorically, yeah. And get back to the honor, bro. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those are those are all really powerful from educated kings, college educated kings. Um, I touched on a couple of my solutions. So definitely I encourage everybody to Google the forward party and learn about their values. Um, it's not an not an either or approach, um, not left, not right, we're moving forward together. Definitely touched on the Surgeon General, um, Mr. Murphy. Um, we need a culture shift all the way around. We need to we need to really just um, change the infrastructure, as Coop was saying. Um, I do want to bring up something I brought up in the past episode, just to refresh y'all's memory. There was some studies done in uh, prison in Canada and as well as violent neighborhoods in uh, Canada where kids were out of control. They were violent. It was an unpleasant, unhealthy environment, as well as um, the prison as well. So they implemented a meditation and mindfulness programs inside of them, and they saw an influx reduction in violence. So I'm going to use that example, and we need to somehow incorporate mindfulness and meditation within our schools, strictly in a scientific way, because we can't infringe on, on anybody's religious beliefs. But you simply use it as a scientific tool, because it's something that connects you with yourself. And I think that the root of most problems are the fact that we don't feel at home within ourselves. We don't find this temple to be a home. We find this temple to be a burden. This temple is a blessing. That means we're detached from the vessel that we are blessed with. No matter how you want to look at it, religious, scientific, this is this is our only avenue to experience life. And we should be at home within this, this avenue, within this vessel. So implementing meditation and mindfulness within um, our schools, within the workplace, um, within any type of job, within the government, um, connection with self is the most important thing. Then on top of that, um, I do want to make sure that I quote my friend Preston Ellington. He's a, getting a PhD at um, WCU right now. We um, had a conversation on the importance, how physical therapy is being used to fight the crisis of the drug epidemic in America, which is another thing we can talk about on another episode as far as how we're declining as Americans. 
He said physical therapy now is being used to treat people's mental health because they have something called a runner's high. You have things that you have a hit of dopamine, uh, a, a high that is similar to a hit of heroin. And they're using this to combat that because pretty much it's something that is endogenous within our brain. We have an opioid center within our brain. And because opioids and alcohol and drugs and weed is so easily accessible that we're going to those temporary solutions, those self-medication factors to fix our own lives. When we actually have things inside of us, a physical therapy approach where we can work out and work our mind out and work our body out to produce positive chemicals within our body and in turn be healthier people. And he told me, he told me that that is the long-term solution to replace the band-aid that is just self-medication, whether that be through pharmaceuticals or whether that be through street drugs. So physical therapy, mindfulness and meditation implementation within these systems, not just I'm telling you as an individual to go out there and do these things. No, we need to tell you and we need to go into the systems and make sure that we're somehow creating a system uh, with positive symptoms. Amen. That's powerful. <laughs> powerful. All right, y'all. Go ahead and sign us out. Absolutely, y'all. Well, that was a great talk, y'all. Great talk, y'all. Yeah. Well, it's been real. I'm King Rel. You can follow me on all socials, but mainly Instagram at KingRelly05. Absolutely. Sir. This is King Sage, K-J-N-G-S-A-G-E. You can follow me right here, Instagram, right there. All right. It's King Coop. Uh, follow me at um, on Instagram, underscore K-I-N-G-K-O-O-P. And then follow the uh, podcast page, Peace of Mind 888, on Instagram and um, our TikTok, too. Yeah, our TikTok. Yeah, we're on Peace TikTok. Peace of Mind on TikTok. Apple, Sp Apple Spotify. We're about to be on Google Podcasts, and of course we're on YouTube. Of this course. has been Peace of Mind, where we just blew your mind.